My name is Jamie Andrews and today I'm going to do a complete walkthrough of the iRobot app including setup. I'll be using the J7 Plus Roomba combo, however a bunch of what you're going to see will be applicable for other iRobot products. Of course the first thing you're going to do is download the iRobot app from either the Apple or uh, Android stores and go ahead and create an account if you have not already. It's going to ask you to enable location services, you'll want to choose while using the app and then you're going to want to add your product. If your product's already plugged in, you should see it there, and then it's going to ask you to connect it to your Wi-Fi. Enter your Wi-Fi password, and uh, then you will be connecting your robot automatically through your phone. It will ask you to push the button on top of the robot, and you will see some lights light up. Once that is done, then you are complete, and the robot will connect to your Wi-Fi get the password from your phone and establish a connection back to iRobot's home base. You should get a message that your robot has successfully connected to your Wi-Fi network and now you get a chance to name your product. Once setup is complete, you will now begin to go into the app and start the mapping process. Now I suggest letting the robot completely charge before starting to map your home. Clicking on the map button there on the right will start the process. As the Roomba combo maps your home, it will also have the option of cleaning or just mapping, which you'll see here in a few minutes. Now make sure that you go ahead and open up all your doors, turn on all lights, as the robot will need this in order to complete a uh, map at the first run. Go ahead and click on create a new smart map, and there are those tips that they'll give you for making sure that all your doors are open and all your lights are on when it's mapping. This is a very important part of the process. Now here's where you get the two choices, either clean and map or smart mapping run. I suggest starting with a smart mapping run as it uses less battery and you're going to want this to finish mapping your home. So choose that option and uh, it will go ahead and go out now and start learning your home. Now iRobot says it could take a couple of times for it to completely learn your home. However, with me, it did it really in just one go. Now you can't follow along as it is mapping uh, in the app here, but when it is complete and gone back to the dock, you should see the map that it has created. I typically kind of walk along with it as it's running around the house mapping just to make sure it's not getting into any trouble. Once it is back to the dock, you're going to want to click on the map to see the new map that has just been created. Now here's where you got opportunity to see how well it did mapping your home. If there are any rooms that are missing, you can start a mapping run again, or you can go ahead and start customizing the map that it has created for you, as you see here. It tries to divide the rooms up for you. It does an okay job at it. You can see where it's detected carpet in my home and also detected the different rooms. So we're going to walk through here in just a little bit and show you how to do the process of customizing the rooms and also breaking them up properly because as you can see here my entryways for my rooms are not slanted like it shows here. So now we're going to start the process of setting up and dividing our rooms. Now if you have any other robot vacuums in the past, any other smart robot vacuums, you'll know this process is a little bit different with iRobot uh, and the way they have you set it up. So. As you see here, they try to go ahead and set it up for you, but you will need to do some edits on your own. And the way you'll do that is select the lines that are already created for you on the map, and you're going to move the map around to line up the lines on the doorway. And then you're going to use two fingers, which will allow you to twist the line and line up the line so that it's straight across your doorway. You'll repeat this process. You also get the option to either delete the lines if there's too many lines on your map, or you can add a new division that will divide up a new room for you if you don't have enough. I didn't have enough, so I had to select uh, to add a new divider in. The whole process just takes a few minutes to get set up, and it's really not so bad. Okay, once you are done dividing your rooms up, you will have a few other options to customize your map. Uh, the first one in the uh, middle section down below is the room labels. Click on that and you see here I already have my rooms labeled, but uh, it gives you the option to go in and label each of your rooms. Uh, it gives you several different lists of room labels that you can choose from, or if you go all the way up to the top you have custom. Now the reason that this is custom is really you're doing a custom icon. So if I select any of these icons on the left, 
I can now give it a custom name. Let's say I don't want to call it laundry. Let's say I want to call it my clothes room. Uh, I can give it a custom name and that icon will stay. Let's say we don't have an icon for it. We can choose other at the bottom and we can give the room a custom name here. The next option is zones at the bottom right. Now zones are going to give you three different options within itself. The first one at the bottom left is a keep out zone. And you see here on the right, I already have one created. Uh, but the purpose of the keep out zone means just that, that it will keep the robot out of this area. So let's say I have some, some table lamps here with some cords under it and I don't want the robot to get tangled up in it. I can create that. If I save that, create the keep out zone, the robot will not go in that zone. The next option is a no mop zone. So let's say I don't want it to mop over here in the corner of my office. I have a chair mat under my floor here. Uh, as you can see, it's not picking it up as a uh, carpet. And so it may be inclined to mop on top of that. So let's say I don't want it to mop, even though it sees that as a hard floor surface, I can save as a no mop zone and tell it just to never mop there. It will still vacuum, but it won't mop. So that's no mop zone. You can create as many of these zones as you wish. Uh, the last option at the bottom right is a clean zone. I like this is pretty neat. Uh, I have cat litter boxes right here in my entryway. And so if I want to create a custom zone, a clean zone to say, just clean these cat around these cat litter boxes. Cause a lot of times they have cat litter around them. I can uh, name the zone and just say, uh, call this other and just call it um, litter and I'll show you in a few minutes where I can select this zone when doing a cleaning and the robot instead of cleaning the entire entryway the robot will just go over here and clean up around the litter boxes you can create as many of those clean zones as you want and I'll show you in a few minutes where they make suggestions where uh, for, for new clean zones for you uh, so those are the map options once you have your map all set up uh, we'll go ahead and go back into the app and give you a quick overview of the rest of the app. Starting at the top left hand corner, we have the hamburger menu. Uh, if you select that, you have your account options, smart home integration, where you can integrate this in with your Google home, Amazon Alexa, or Siri. Uh, you can add additional products. If you buy additional iRobot products here, and also the link to the iRobot store. Top right hand corner is new job, a couple of different options here. If you want it to clean the entire house, you just choose clean everywhere and then your cleaning preferences. Now let's run through these cleaning preferences real quick. Cleaning mode, you have the choice here with the Roomba combo of either vacuum or vacuum and mop. If you choose the mop functionality and unfortunately there is no mop only mode, there's just vacuum or vacuum plus mop. You can choose the liquid amount. Eco is going to put down just a little bit of liquid Think hardwood floors where you don't want a bunch of liquid on them. Standard is just a regular amount of liquid and ultra is a lot more liquid. Now think about it. If you want a kitchen with a lot of stains, you may want more liquid there and uh, eco maybe for your hardwood floors. Then you have the option to choose between one pass or two passes. And of course this is the setting for clean everywhere. But if you don't want to clean everywhere, uh, the next option down is map. So if you have multi floors, you'll be able to choose between your maps here. If it's not on the main floor, if it's on the second floor of your house, you'll need to pick the robot up, put it on the second floor, and then switch between maps there to have it clean the rooms in the second floor. I only have one floor, so I can't show you that here. Uh, one of the more popular options is room cleanings. So let's say I want to clean the entryway and the kitchen. One thing I like here is that you have different settings for each. It also tells you the approximate amount of time it will take to clean each entryway. So here we have the option in the entryway. Let's say I only want to vacuum there and I want to do two passes. Uh, as you see, it now went up to six minutes for the estimate time for cleaning. And in the kitchen, let's say I want to do um, ultra amount of water. I only want one pass and I want to do vacuum and mop. So you can send this out to clean the entryway and the kitchen and have two different settings for each room. I really like that. You can also down here at the very bottom, so two options, 13 minutes at the very bottom. If I click start now, they're saying it'll take about 13 minutes to do this job. I can also set this as a favorite. Uh, let's say I want to call this uh, daily. And it will allow me to create a favorite. And this is for uh, if I want to call it up with my assistant, I can do that. 
and so now you see here daily is created as a favorite so those are my two, my, my uh, couple options there i can do a full clean uh, choose between my maps i can do room cleanings down at the very bottom i have my last option which is the zone that i just cleaned, uh, created which is litter as around the litter boxes so if i select that uh, it says take about four minutes to clean that zone and i can do a customization there and so to just clean around the litter boxes so that's the new job button that's the one you'll be using the most down here in the middle on the left side we have the battery indicator i wish they gave you a percentage meter they don't it's just this little indicator here as you see it is charging on the dock to the right of that what looks like waves or bacon is the water tank uh fill level and you see here it's about half full that's an approximate uh, level in the water tank uh, down right below that we have the empty dustbin so if i push that the dock will start up and extract the contents from the internal dustbin of the robot uh, favorites is what we just talked about a few minutes ago where you can create new favorites there's some here already set up click the plus sign in the top right hand corner to create a new favorite uh, right below that is schedule and you have a couple options here one is a cleaning schedule you see i have two of them set up here this one you can also toggle them on or toggle them off at any time you see here i have it set for every monday at 10 a.m to clean the entryway and every wednesday through friday at 11 a.m to clean the hallway look in the settings here uh, i have two different options we'll talk about that in a second but you see here at my start time how many days i want to repeat this i can either choose to clean everywhere i can select between my map i can select my different rooms i can select multiple rooms at the same time if i want to and also the different settings for the cleaning i can also choose the zone if i want and obviously i can delete this schedule from down here also automation's kind of weird i haven't tested this uh, but basically it says that when i leave home uh, it will start the schedule so mm, I, I don't really know about that that's an interesting option i haven't tested it uh, let me know down, down below if you use this uh, i don't know that i personally would but that is the schedule the other option for the schedule is do not disturb and so let's say there's a time of the day uh, let's say at eight o'clock night at midnight where maybe you're vacuuming but you got the kids asleep and you don't want the dustbin to run and automatically extract the contents of the robot because it's fairly loud you can set a quiet time up and it will stop that process during that time uh, and if you start a cleaning it'll also warn you you're starting a cleaning during the t uh, quiet time so it doesn't really affect much else uh, other than that but uh, it gives you some options you can also set multiple quiet times by clicking the plus sign in the top left hand corner so that's schedule you can see the quick schedule here you can uh, you know toggle them on and off from here too history is going to give you a little bit of specs for the cleaning history in the past uh, up here at the top you have area and lifetime lifetime is the lifetime specs of the robot you can see here it's done 55 jobs a uh, total of seven hours and three minutes and it's emptied the dustbin into the dock a total of 21 times now going into the um, history here the dark green area is where it has mopped so you can see where it mopped if you bring up on the menu here you can see it mopped 22 square feet it took 12 minutes to do that uh, also we can see here let's do it here. yep right here you can see the light green area with the kind of fuzzy underneath is the carpet so the light green shows the carpeted area or the area that it vacuumed whereas the darker green is the area that it mopped so you see all that in the history okay so here on messages we have different messages that'll come to you mostly tips from irobot but down here at the bottom this will pop up every now and then map suggestions because it's got a camera on the front of it uh you see here showing that there is an oven here in my kitchen sure enough there is an oven right there so it can suggest a clean zone which is you can either dismiss this or add this as a cleaning zone automatically or it's suggesting hey it might be a good place to clean often is right there in front of the oven i've seen a few of them pop up like around the couch around the kitchen table it's just something neat to help automate some of the processes there so you'll see that show up in messages all right moving on down to the bottom product health will tell you the amount of time left on your brushes your brush rollers and your filters and a link down below to uh, shop for additional accessories uh, to go ahead and purchase those before time runs out on them these are just suggestions based on hours you might be able to get a little bit less a little bit more out of the products 
Product settings is somewhere you want to go set up uh, fairly quickly after getting the robot. About room by combo at the top is just going to tell you about your serial number, uh, the allow you to rename it if you want to, just basically about the robot itself. Uh, the next one down, locate Roomba combo. So let's say it gets stuck under the bed and you don't know where it's at because it's just not back of the dock. It's quiet. It's not moving. It's stuck somewhere. Uh, you click locate Roomba combo uh, and it will make an audible sound. The robot will providing it's not dead and you'll be able to go fetch it from wherever it's at. About clean base is kind of like about Roomba combo. That's the dock. It'll just tell you some specific information about the software on it. Uh, cleaning preferences, uh, a couple options here. Cleaning passes at the top, you can choose between one pass, two pass, or room size clean. Now this is the default setting that will come up every time you choose either a full cleaning or a room cleaning. So you could always change this each time before setting it out for a clean. So I suggest setting it here to what you'd want the most amount of time so that you don't have to keep changing it. If you always want your robot to make two passes in your rooms, go ahead and choose two passes here. I usually only want one pass, so I chose one pass. The room size clean, eh, I had a mixed bag of feelings about this. Uh, basically, it's supposed to cover large rooms once and small to medium sized rooms two to three times. I found it didn't work so, so well. It doesn't really make a whole lot of sense to me, so I'm not going to choose that option, but you can if you want to. Uh, the next one is the bin full behavior. Do not clean when it's full. Uh, the option I choose, I uh, recommend you choosing it as well. You don't really want the robot cleaning if the dustbin is full because obviously it won't be as effective. So that's sort of setting I recommend you choosing. Liquid amount, uh, again, kind of like the amount of passes through your room. Uh, this can be changed at the beginning of each cleaning. You have Eco, Standard, or Ultra. I would choose the one that you most often go with. Uh, that'll make you your room cleanings a little, go a little bit quicker and you know I have to do so many edits so I chose standard that's generally what I leave it on obstacle detection uh, I recommend leaving that on that'll avoid certain objects like pet waste and shoes cords and stuff but if you don't want it on you can always turn it off right here all right the next option is child pet lock the button that's on top of the robot if you have pets that like to kind of climb all over your robots or kids that like to push buttons you can turn that button, disable that button right here in the app. I keep it from accidentally going out and doing a full house cleaning without you knowing about it. The status lights on the dock tell you uh, which uh, lights are either on or off. You can toggle them on or off here. Wi-Fi settings are just the settings for your Wi-Fi network in your house. Of course, robot language is the language from where you live. You can reboot, reboot the robot for right here in the app. But let's say the robot's not even responding in the app. You can hold down the button, at least on the Roomba combo, you can hold down the button for about 10 seconds and it'll automatically do a reboot. If you want to sell this or give it to a family member, you can go here and remove it from the app and do a factory reset. If you do sell it or give it away, that's something I recommend you doing. Uh, down here right below that is your help section. There are some FAQs, your uh, instruction guide, warranty, quick start card is right here in case you lose those there in the box you can contact irobot support from here you can report a problem uh, so this is your help section and at the very bottom we have irobot beta this is an option you can opt in or out i have opted into it uh the top right hand corner you can leave it if you want i haven't seen anything pop up here but supposedly if you opt in the new beta features come out they'll release them to you and you can you know give them feedback or not on that so it's up to you as to whether or not you want to opt in or out all right so that is a complete overview of the irobot app and keep in mind here where we were in the very beginning is the map section here that brings up uh, the map where you can delete the map create a whole new mapping run or at the top add a new floor uh, but that is basically a complete overview everything's here on this one page Pretty simple and easy is one of the things I like about iRobot. Hey, if you have any questions, drop those down below. I'll do the best I can to help you answer them. I appreciate you watching this video, everyone. Take it easy. We'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.